So it's been a long time since I made my first YouTube lesson. Do you remember this guy? Hey there, it's Marcel from LessonsWithMarcel.com, and I'm here to talk to you about... Hopefully production quality has changed for the better. But in that first lesson, I was talking about escape notes. That's basically playing a fretted line up the neck and then using an open string to escape back to first or second position. You can think something like this. Now that's actually just a really specific example of floating. Floating is the act of favoring open strings when playing a fretted line up the neck. For instance, let's use a closed C major scale position. Now let's find all the notes that could be replaced by open strings. These are all of the notes you use when you tune a guitar like this. And let's replace them with their open string counterparts. That sound is killer, and you can find it all over this YouTube channel. For instance, my version of Salt Creek I did for my subscriber special, uh, the version of Whiskey Before Breakfast I do, and even the Jazz and Grass November 2018 Bluegrass Lick compilation is full of those licks. Yet we've never really talked about floating specifically in a lesson. And for that reason, I thought we should look at the awesome Pat Flynn licks in my favorite new grass revival song, In the Middle of the Night. In the middle of the night. So just now, I set up the concept of floating pretty simply. Basically, you have a line, you play the normal way, and you change the fretted notes to open strings. But just like usual in these videos, there is a much better way to think about this. Because if we're just rearranging lines that already work fine with all of the notes fretted, why bother changing them at all? Floating is really only going to be useful to us if it's making things significantly easier to play or more musical. Think about our escape note example again. We're going down here, we're running out of strings, we're running out of space, we're up against a wall, we have nowhere to go, and we get this beautiful open string to let us move our hand all the way back. But more than just saving us, this line really only works floated. Any attempt to close it up kind of takes away what's inherently interesting about this musical phrase. So it doesn't just make sense to float every line or piece of music. There's definite moments that will facilitate a melody's layout more, help us travel the neck better, or just with the addition of ringing strings become more musical. To find more ideas like that, let's listen to our buddy Pat Flynn of Newgrass Revival. In the middle of the night. Okay, so the beginning of In the Middle of the Night is pretty simple. We have a G chord, we have a C chord or a C add nine chord, and then we have two measures of E minor where we get the guitar fills. So the first four measures sound like this. Okay, so looking at the video, we can pretty immediately see that Pat is using an open A string and then fretting some notes higher up the neck. Um, this can fit our loose definition of floating, but there's a lot of possible ways that he could have played this lick. So first, let's talk about how he did play it and why that's useful, why he probably laid it out that way, and then let's look at all the other ways he could have played it and see why they're not as useful. So there's three things I see right away about how Pat chose to play this lick. Number one, he's switching places from where he needs to play the E minor chord to where he needs to play the main meat of the melody. And right in the middle of that is the open A string. So he's using that floating or escape note knowledge to let him move his hand around. Now I ask myself, okay, but why bother even moving up the neck in the first place? And I think that's because he wants to slide down from the seventh fret of the A string, almost like this is a horn line and it's got a fall on the end of it. The third thing I notice is that the double hammer-on, starting with the open A string, makes those three notes feel tied together, whereas the two notes that come after it are picked and they both pop at us. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> so what if he stayed lower down the neck? So immediately he's lost the phrasing of those three notes that did have the double hammer on, but now don't. And also he has no way to slide out of the highest note, right? I have nowhere to take my hand, so it feels like there's that horn fall at the end. So what if he still shifted up the neck but didn't use the open A string? <laughs> 
Now we've still lost the phrasing of the first three notes of the line, and it's harder for me to shift out of the chord up to where I want to play my lick. So what we're left with is a line that really can only be played with the escape note kind of floating. It's easier. It sounds more musical. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now let's look at the next four measures. <laughs> Hopefully now you're seeing a lot of the same things that I'm seeing. Let's play it now. Okay, we're hitting all of the check marks again. Using floating is a line pad to start a lower backstepping line higher up the neck so he's in position to hit those last three notes and really the only feasible place to play them on the guitar. And not to mention floating is making the layout of the lick much simpler on the fretboard and making it sound more musical with the open strings. The ringing of the open strings is pleasant. It's a home run. Let's look at the other ways you could play this though because I guarantee they're not going to be as successful. Like what if he stayed lower on the neck? <laughs> if you couldn't tell from me playing it just now, that is really hard to accurately hit. In fact, it's laughably hard considering how easy it is to play the way he normally plays it. So what if he played it up the neck but with no open strings? Impossible. So this guitar lick really only has one elegant solution and it's floating all the way. Very cool stuff. Feel free to grab the tab for this. It'll be available on my website. There's a link in the description below. All right, if you like taking a lesson from the biggest, baddest Billy Goat in the barnyard, please do me a favor, subscribe to this channel and then run over to my website. Check out all of the free tabs I release. You can sign up for Skype lessons. You can see all of the guitar licks that we write for Jazz and Grass, plus the podcasts that we do, and all of the new blog posts that I'm writing. That's right, if you're a fan of the old website when I used to do those text lessons, they're coming back in the form of blog posts. So yeah, hopefully I see you around there for all of that. If not, I'll see you right here next Wednesday for another YouTube video. I'll see you then. When that train comes tumbling down